Getting a new kitten is a really exciting time, but getting them to use their litter tray can be problematic. So today I'm going to discuss the strategies that you can use to get your kitten to use a litter tray in no time at all. And then my final question today is from Caleb, who says, Hello, I've got two little kittens, and despite everything I try, I seem not to get one of them to pee in the box. I have caught her about to pee before, and I picked her up and put her in the litter tray. Um, she seems to go to the box just to poop, but not to pee. Um, I also think that she's stressed because she always runs away from us, but then other times she'll, um, she'll come up and play with us um, and get up on our lap and let us pet her. So, you know, the bottom line is, is how can we litter train this kitten to use the litter tray for peeing as well as pooing? You know, and does stress play a role? And what can we do about that potential stress? So, Kittens actually have a natural urge to go to the toilet somewhere where they can cover up their waste. And so actually often will take very little training, you know, certainly compared to dogs who can sometimes be quite challenging or it can take quite a long time to, to house train them, to toilet train them there. So when we're thinking about kittens though, there's a number of things that we can think about. The first thing is what tray are we using? So it needs to be a tray that's easy for this little kitten to get into. You know, I'm not sure how old they are, but you know, if they're small and we've got a, a, a litter tray with a high lip, then it can be actually very difficult for them to get into that and that will put them off unless they're you know really motivated because they're going to do a poo. Um, so make sure the lip's not too high, use a shallow litter tray. Um, also place a puppy pad underneath the tray which will just allow you to clean it up much more easily if you miss the tray and don't use a really tiny tray as well because it's more likely that your little kitten is going to miss it. So use a big tray um, with low sides. Next up we need to think of litter. Um, so some cats are really fussy over the type of litter that they, that they use. So really to start off with, try a non-scented and a non-clumping litter, um, just to make it more likely that your cat will accept it. Um, you know, cats are very sensitive with their smell, um, and yeah, some of these um, you know, kind of scented uh, litters are gonna really put them off. Also, if they're a clumping litter, and they kind of, when they're trying to, to cover their, um, their pee or their poop, then it will become clumped and stick to the bottom of their feet, which cats really don't like. Um, another thing to think about, is certainly if you've got very young kittens, is the, kit the litter does need to be non-toxic because they will potentially, you know, try and eat a little bit of it. So we don't want anything that's toxic if it's eaten by a kitten. Okay, and then the third thing we need to think about is location. So where are we putting these litter trays? So really it should be away from food and water sources. So cats really do like to be clean um, and they like to toilet away from where they're eating and drinking. So make sure that's the case. Also, it needs to be a private space, so don't put it, you know, in the middle of the hall or by the front door because, you know, that's not private and a cat will be less likely to use it. Keeping the kittens in one room with easy access to the tray is another thing that we can think about to just get them used to it to start with, you know, and also that means that they're not going to get caught short. So young kittens might not yet have a full bladder control and so they're more likely to have accidents or they're more likely to realise they need to use the toilet and then go pretty much straight away. Now if they've got kind of half the house, a couple of stair flights of stairs to, to navigate then the chances are that they're not going to get there in time. Um, you know compare that to going to going for a poop um, you know when that urge is often you know less initially. So yeah, that's what kind of what we can think about, just get them used to the tray. As for where we place it, well, like I say, it needs to be a private space and actually corners of rooms are a really good place to go. So kittens will often naturally go to the toilet in the corner of the room. Um, and one of the reasons for this is that it means that they can survey, they can look out at the rest of the room and there's no chance of kind of being ambushed of a litter mate or another cat kind of sneaking up on them and ambushing them, you know, while they're potentially a little bit vulnerable and going to the toilet. So, you know, that's important as well when we're thinking of litter tray placement. Now, fourth up, we need to think of keeping the litter tray clean. Now that obviously goes without saying, um, you know, we need to keep it clean. We need to regularly refresh the litter. Um, I'd certainly be cleaning out at least once a day, but some cats Cats, they just won't use a tray that's been used just once even just for a little tiny bit of pee. Um, so you know keeping that litter tray clean is really important. Also um, you know think about what you're cleaning it out with. You want to clean it out with a disinfectant but then rinse it really well so there's no kind of strong smells, um, no strong fragrances that again may put your cat off. So yeah clean it by all means with you know whatever cleaner you want to use but rinse it really well with water. And then the final thing we think need to think about when we're thinking of litter trays with multi cat households in general is how many litter trays you have and really there need to be one more than the number of cats there are in the house so in this case if there are two kittens there may be other cats but let's say there are two kittens in the house where we need three trays now if there were three cats so two kittens and another 
cat already there, then that's three cats, we need four trays. And the same goes for the number of food bowls and water stations as well. So all of those things should get your cat and your kitten using their litter tray and get them litter trained. Now the other part of the question was we think that this little kitten is stressed and what can we do about that? Well, you know, absolutely stress can cause spraying, it can cause marking behaviour and there are a number of things that we can do. So we can, you know, discuss, I've already discussed the number of trays and food stations and water stations that we need. You know, new to them depending on their age, you know, that has a big impact on, on if they're spraying certainly and if they're exhibiting marking behaviour. We need safe spaces for our cats, you know, so they can always go and hide somewhere if they're feeling threatened and also we need 3D spaces so cats are really three-dimensional in their outlook so they do like to to get up high on the tops of shelves on tops of cupboards um, you know all different places like that so make sure that there's a, a safe space and 3D spaces as well. Um, fell away is another thing that we can do so this is a, a pheromone and I talk about this a lot when it comes to stress in cats um, it just naturally makes them feel more at home makes them feel like that's their safe space and really reduce their stress levels and actually if you head over to the knowledge vault over at dralexanswers.com there is a free free guide uh, sorry there is a free guide to stress there in cats so kind of recognizing that your cat is stressed the signs that they're stressed and also how to go about dealing with that de-stressing and relaxing them as well so you know both of those things are very important when it comes to getting a cat to urinate in their tray rather than spraying around the rest of the house. I suspect that that's not the case with this kitten and really it's just a case of getting them used to the litter tray. Um, but you know, definitely check out that guide too. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to dralexanswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.